Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, it's once again we call on your holy and divine name. Father, we come not for a shape, form, or fashion, or an outside show to the world, but we come in the humblest and the sincere manner that we know how. Giving you praise and thanks, Father God, for blessing our eyes to come open to see this day. This day that you have made, let us be glad and rejoice that you did. Father God, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Because if it had not been for your love, your mercy, and your grace, Lord, where would we be? Father, we ask for forgiveness of our many shortcomings. Because somewhere along the way on this journey, Lord, all have sinned and come short of the mark, which is your glory. But we place the sins that we ask forgiveness for, Father God, at your feet, that they will be taken by you and casted into the sea of forgiveness forever. Father, we ask that you remember the sick, the careless and the unconcerned, those that don't know you from the free part of their sins, those that are standing at the crossroads of life, wondering which direction to take. Give them the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to know that if we are all of your children, follow in the steps that you order for us to follow in, we will come out with the name of victory and not the name of victory. Glory to your mighty name. Father God, remember those that walk around day by day, never giving you praise and thanks for anything, thinking that they are breathing the breath of life on their own. We pray that their mind and their heart be touched before it's everlasting too late. And then, Father God, we ask that you bless the man who is stepping out to be one of the messengers of your gospel. Father God, use him in the way that you would have him to be used. Father God, just let your spirit reign on him, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And then, Father God, continue to bless new life in Christ as a whole. Continue to bless us member by member. Father God, strengthen us where we are weak. Build us up where we are torn down and pop us up on every lean inside. And if there's anything within our mind, heart, body, and soul, that's not of your words, your will, and your way, we ask that it be removed by your power. Because everything moves by the power of God. Father God, as we stand before your people and sing your Zion song, let us give you our best, Father God, that someone may see the good works in us and glorify you, our Father which is in heaven. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we do ask and we pray. Amen, amen, amen.
You need to wave your hand. 
to all the first time visitors, members, and friends who are here to support this great objective that we are trying to accomplish today. Y'all gotta forgive us. We act up a little bit when we think about how good God is. I'm gonna say this because I want everybody to think about this. The name of our church is New Life in Christ. If you're going to experience, get the new life experience, you got to come in here not with that typical church mindset. Oh, I just came. No. If you know that God has been good, we don't mind if you pray for him here today. If you've been delivered, go ahead and bless his name. If he saved your soul, go ahead and bless his name. Watch this. If you're making it in the middle of a mess, go ahead and show hallelujah to God.
coming to your house of worship yeah. one more time. Yeah. God, you said in your word, God, that this is the day uh -huh. that the Lord has made. Yeah. We shall be glad yeah. and rejoice in him. Yeah. God, we call for your angels yeah. to set the atmosphere yeah. today, God. Yeah. We call forth your anointing, God, to rest in this house, God, as we come for this glorious occasion, God. God, but most of all, we welcome your presence. Oh, God, we know where you at, God. You said in your word, where two or three are joined together in your name, you will be in the midst, God. And we welcome your presence in this temple, God. We ask that you bless the angel of this house, God. God, continue to anoint him for the work that you have called him to do, God. God, bless your people, God, in the name of Jesus. Open up their ears that they may hear what the Spirit has to say. Open up their hearts, God, that they may receive your word. But most of all, God, dip your son down in the well of your anointing, God. Okay, um, and then after that, I'm going to say something. <laughs> right, so, 
<laughs> He's a graduate of Travis Friends High School. He's the son of Lafayette and Louise Thompson. He's the only male of his parents that, uh, that survived. Tommy is a graduate of Inman Bible College. All right. And he's also the husband of my baby sister, All right. Minister Latrice Falls. I'm Foster Thompson. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, he has five kids, and he has six grandchildren. And Tommy, he was also baptized at Athens Baptist Church in Travis Red. And he taught Sunday school for 10 years. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and his ultimate goal in his life is to make God proud. All right, yes. Amen. And I just want to say this. Tommy's a good guy. All right, all right. And not only is he a good guy, but he's a spiritual person. Amen. Things that I went through, my growth would give me them encouraging words. Yeah, when I, I didn't have nobody at times. Right, and I thank God for him. Amen. I thank God for him. Not just because he married my baby sister, but I am thank God that he came into my life. Because he has been such an inspiration to me too. And to my ministry. And I thank God for him. And uh, I was thinking of something. I know how he loves those cowboy movies. And, uh, and I know how my dad loves cowboy movies. And, uh, and I thought of this, 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 this subject, because I think I'm going to preach on this subject one day. I was thinking about, y'all remember that uh, cowboy movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly? Well, that's all of us. That's all of us. Every single person in here knows we've been bad, we've been ugly, we've been good. You were here, my brother-in-law, my friend, my brother. All right. Brother Tom Lee Thomas. All right, now.
you know, when I was reading the Bible and I read this parable, and you know, it's a hard parable. It's a hard parable because it talks about a place where that when we die, there's a place where we're going to go. Right. That's right. That's the place where we're going to go. And a lot of times, we don't want to hear that. Let me ask y'all a question. All of y'all in here, who believe in heaven and hell? So we all don't want to go there. We agree that when we die, there is a place other than this world that we're going to spend it. So this, when God began to deal with me on this parable, I was like, man, oh, boy, it's hard. God, it's the people, you know, they didn't want to hear you preach about that. He said, that's what they need to hear. In the world other than this one, where you will spend eternity, the people will have to make their decision. And God will tell me, he said, you know, I will, I will, God will minister to me. And I was thinking about conviction. And a lot of times we think conviction is a bad thing. You know, because a lot of times when we are convicted, instead of saying, God, you know what, I'm so sorry. Lord. I need your help. All but a lot right. of times when we are convicted, we sort of like freeze up and, yeah. and our pride gets in the yeah. way. And and to be honest with you, we don't want to give up those things that we enjoy. Right. Lust of the eye. The flesh. Sin yeah. feel, feel, feel good. Yeah. Yeah. And Satan, he is so crafty yeah. and slick. He will use those things to entice you and to go into hell. All right. And when you get to hell, they're not there. <laughs> hey, you about to you about to say it. Say it. Now, I'm telling you. Boy, you look at, you know, I, I know y'all haven't heard me talk about how many pastors didn't know that. But that was my buddy, that was my pastor, that was my friend. And I'm not saying he was a God, but if you would rejoice it, he would rejoice with you. Yeah. If you was in the fire, you know what he would do? He'd get in the fire with you. Amen. He wasn't scared of the death. Oh, oh, man. oh man. But let's, 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 let's go to our scripture. Uh, everybody got it? Amen. Okay. Uh, that was a certain rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. And at his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with swords and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. The time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. My eyes. And in hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. Yes. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. Right. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Yes. And besides all of this, between us and you, a great chisel has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send letters to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. And Abraham said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Let's go to God in prayer. We need help today. Dear God, we just thank you for all that you do. We thank you for all your blessings. God, we know that Song, we have to take the rain along with the sunshine, God. And, and I thank you, God, and for putting the desires and the, the people heart to come out to hear this message. And to, most of all, God, to give you honor and praise, God. We know, God, that no flesh will glory in your sight. For all the glory and honor belongs to you, God. 
God, we just thank you. We just pray that you have your way. Allow your Holy Spirit to take control of this service. Have it to what, be what you want it to be, oh God. God, I pray, God, that you will just put me in your blood. Hide me behind your precious cross. Speak to me, speak through me. Someone needs a word from you, God. Some of us are not feeling well in our bodies. Some of us are not doing well financially, God. We know that you are able to do all things. So, God, we come before you today, singing it already done. God, we love you and we thank you. And we just continue to give you all the honor, glory, and praise. For it's in your precious name, Jesus Christ, we give all the honor, glory, and praise. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes, I, uh, like I said, when I was reading uh, to this parable, you know, Satan, he does what he does best. You know, and I was in my ear, he was telling me, Tommy, now how you, you know, you preaching to folks about heaven and hell, but you know that thing you praying to God about? And I had to do the same thing Jesus did when Satan tried to tip him. I had to use the word. I said, prayers of the righteous of every month. Pray without ceasing. You know, but mm, 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 Satan rough, y'all. Y'all have to believe that he exists. And he do not mean you no good. So if I have to have a title for this sermon, uh, bad language and all, it would be, it ain't what it looks like. And you will see how Jesus in this parable, how he has 
one person over here, one over there, one looking like this, and one looking like that. Okay. Such as we have the story before us today. Now, y'all here at New Life, whenever I get an opportunity to preach again, you'll find out that I like stories. I like especially the Old Testament. I like to read the kind of stories and, and read and, and feel like what it felt like to live in those days. You know? And a lot of times people think that the Old Testament is real, irrelevant today. But if you read from Genesis to Revelation, you will see Jesus in between all the lines. And in this parable we have today, that is probably no greater contrast in all the Bible than the contrast that we have between this rich man and the beggar. And it is my desire that God use me in a way to tell stories, tell the story of these two people. I'll be patient with you. I know don't go to sleep over that time. You might wake up, you'd be the only one in here. <laughs> Oh, 
he said it. He was yeah. about edifying. He was about telling people about who his father was. Yeah. Where, you know, and why he came. And right. The power that he had. And the power right. that he had. Right. Right. And the power that he wants to use in us to yeah. know about God. Right. Okay. Uh, and, uh, that, that was uh, uh, and that was the time where they, they, they was in the town of Messina. Uh -huh. And they brought a blind man to Jesus. And like I said earlier, they wanted to see miracles. They wanted yeah. Jesus to want miracles. Right. But Jesus said, wait a minute, this ain't no monkey show. Yeah. So Jesus got the man by the hand and led him out of town. Yeah. Because sometimes you have to, Jesus has to do you like that. You have to get by Jesus by yourself. Yeah. Because a lot of times you can't hear God, you yeah. can't hear Jesus because of the disrespect. You know, he touched the man's eyes, and the man said, what well, Jesus said, what do you say? He said, I see men walking around like Jesus, okay. trees. Yeah. And, and it wasn't because Jesus didn't have the power the first time, uh, but a lot of times Jesus had to touch us again. How many times? How many times? How many times? Sometimes you have to get nasty with that. That's right. And right. Jesus spit in the man's eye. Yeah. You have to get nasty with yeah. Satan sometimes. Yeah. You can't play with it. Yeah. You play with the sex, you're going to get this. What's going to happen? Right. Right. You right. can't play it. Right. Jesus said, the best thing that you say, don't get it on. Right. Yeah. 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 That sounds repulsive to me and you, right? Yeah. But that was healing in that. Yeah. Yeah. The man yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. But this is the story we have before us today. Yeah. You know, uh, in my desire that the Holy Spirit will be in a way that when you leave here, you will not be the same. All right. Because heaven and hell is breathing. Amen. Yes. And right now, decisions will have detrimental effects on your eternal destination. That's right. That's right. Think you got time. You got a plan. You got a plan. You know, uh, if your name ain't quick, you better be ready. And the story we have before us, Jesus has painted a picture. I'm gonna try to tell a story. Y'all just bear with me. He has painted a picture of them in life. He has pictured, uh, painted a picture of them in death. And for the, a time in the Bible, the veil is pulled aside and God is allowed, we are allowed to seek and to be trained. Okay. And, and it says that, let's just walk through these two things. First of all, we're going to see them together in and the Bible says that my eyes are just all over the place. So I bear with me. Let's look at this rich man first. The scripture said that he was a very rich man. My mind was rich. You know, when you got money, you can hang around with the uh, what you call them, the hobnob, the uh, whatever, the people, the important people. Yeah. This man was so rich, he was no different from rich folks today. Yeah. Money seemed like they congregated together, and people were congregate to that money. So this man probably, with all his riches, he hung out with doctors and lawyers, uh, if they had a bad doctor. Yeah. And um, this man was so rich that the clothes, that purple clothes and fine linen, it was so, he was so rich that they was probably imported. You know, just like today. Uh, what we call them, sometimes uh, we have to send out of town to get, a, I can do it, Italian suits, Italian shoes. I know one time I had paid about $400 for a pair of Oxford shoes. And, and I love those things too. 
I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> but this man was, he was a rich man. And, okay. and this man being rich and all this, with all this money, he was, not only was he rich, but everybody knew he was rich because he wore his riches wherever he went. You know, he probably had rings on all fingers and had gold chains and yeah, all yeah. this shiny stuff. And, yeah, but this man being rich, he was an evil, wicked, selfish man. And with this man being so rich, he ignored the poor beggar who was laid at his gate every day. I mean, he had to see him. He had to see him every day. He had to pass by him every day. Right, right, but right. this man, being so rich, he had no concern. He would not take pity on this poor beggar. That's right, that's right. You know, this poor beggar would have been glad to get some of the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table, but right, right. he ignored him. He wouldn't do that. That's a point in that. A lot of times, I know up in the charity area, you see all these people out on the streets with signs and stuff and 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 you know what you call it panhandling. You know, a lot of times, you know, you you look at them and and I'm guilty of this because this is one guy that he has about a ten mile radius. He rides a bicycle. And every time we see him, I gave him some money the first time, but the second time I'm like, man, you riding a bicycle? You the better shape than I am. You need to give me the bicycle and give me your sign. You know, I, that might have been rude. <laughs> but um, this man being surrounded and having all of this wealth had no pity on this poor day. The Bible says that the dogs had more concern for this uh, poor baby than the rich man. The dogs looked at his soul. The rich man wouldn't even look at him. You know, we go. Uh, and that's the bag, that's the uh, rich man. So okay. now we're going to look at the poor bag. Okay. Talk, talk to me then. It said, uh, y'all excuse me, my glasses are jumping on. Yes, yeah, all right. It's all right. <laughs> And it says that only a gate separated this rich man and this poor man. Okay. Now, I know we thank God for all our many blessings that we get. But a lot of times when God blesses us, a lot of times what we do is that we allow that to turn into pride. Yeah, and we, we, it, when it turns into pride, then we begin to think that we did it. Right. We, we did it ourselves. Right. 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 So be careful. Thank God for your blessings. But a lot of times, it don't take but one bad doctor report. It don't take but one bad, one bad misplacement, and then you'll be laid at somebody's door. You got a test for me. You know, this, this poor beggar, you know, we, we sometimes we get the feeling that we want to feel bad for him, but. but Lazarus is the only name that the Lord used in his parable. And the, law, and the name Lazarus means God is my help. This man, Lazarus, was said to be both, both sick and hungry. He could have been, you know, his soul could have been bound with the rich man's ointment from his medicine bag. Instead of that, they were licked by the dogs. You know, so... The Bible says in the authorized version it says that his friend he was laid at this gate. But it's a little bit more intense than that. Literally it means that he was thrown there at the gate. Yeah. Every day they would bring this poor man to this rich man's gate and just literally throw him down. Okay. You know, then I was like, okay, Pastor had preached uh, something about uh, Peter and John and yeah, I was like, okay, okay. Now, instead of laying, taking him to the gate and laying down, why not take him to the temple? Right. Or do not, or, or matter of fact, if they have enough faith in God and faith in Jesus, why they do that? Peter and John said, in the name of Jesus, right. yeah. get up and walk. Yeah. Right. Okay. You know, a lot of times we think that we have to go to church and, right. 
and for God to move in our lives, but if that power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You know, then I, you know, I had some friends that had gotten in trouble when they was fighting, and one of the guys got shot. And that's the first time I realized that there is such a thing as a hospital drive-by. Shot the guy, they put him in the car, took him to the mercy room, threw him out on the side of the there. Oh, man. I was like, man, what kind of friend are you? <laughs> but you know what about, I mean, we look at this. I know, I know, I know we look at this rich, this poor beggar, and we think that, you know, he, we feel sorry for him. But in spite of all the bad things that happened in this poor beggar's life, he was a man of faith. Amen. He was a man Amen. who trusted in God. Wow, and he knew that this was not his home. We are, this is not our home. We are right. home. Right. And God has prepared a place for yeah. us. Yeah. Even with his sickness and with his sores right. and with him being hungry, he knew that God had prepared had a place, a mansion. Yeah. He got crowns yeah. and he got yeah. all kinds of stuff for yeah. God. Right. Yeah. And, right. and he knew that. Now we come to church. Yeah. yeah. We do what said the Lord. Right. We walk in the ways of God. Yeah. And then for, for the devil to tell you that's it. Yeah. I done did all this suffering. Uh-huh. The devil, I kept the hell from the devil. This all, no. This man, even with all of his stuff that was going on in his life, okay. he knew that there was something better for him. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, okay. I don't know. I don't know the uh, protocol in heaven. But, uh, let me just add live a little bit, right. okay? I want to uh, add live a little bit uh, to how this poor baby would be acting when he got to heaven. Yeah. You know, they took him to the gate. Yeah. They had him on stretcher now. Yeah. He had souls. Uh-huh. They didn't want to touch him uh-huh. because he was unclean. Uh-huh. They figured they would touch him. He was unclean. They couldn't go to the gate. Yeah. A lot of times, even in today's churches, yeah. like me, I sold drugs. Uh-huh. Now, if you're a drug addict or a drug dealer, or if you are a man that likes to sleep around, uh-huh. you got a name, and if you're a woman that likes to sleep around, you are a, a different name. So, <laughs> can you imagine this poor man walking around heaven, you know, he they wouldn't give him no food. Right. So he'd be like, well, okay, well, keep the bread. Yeah. I dwell in heaven. Right. The bread of heaven. Yeah. I am in the presence of the bread of life. Yeah. Keep your bread. Yeah. And that lamb that you could have gave me, you gave to the dog. Look, yeah. I am in the presence of the lamb. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that purple robe that you pranced around in. Yeah. Look at my crown. Look at my look at my shoes. Oh Lord. That gold, that hunger and thirst after righteousness. I'm gonna eat it. Because I am in the presence of God. The bread of life, the bread of heaven, I'm gonna eat till I can eat. Those souls that y'all would y'all treat me like, you know, like you had to put gloves on. Ooh, yeah. You know, wow. but that skin that you didn't want to touch. Right. Look at me now. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 The Bible says that the corruptible will put on the incorruptible. Look at me. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, this poor man, this poor man, he knew. Listen, I know things may not be as you want them to be. I know you might have pain right into your body. I know you have people talking about you and all this other stuff, but this ain't it. This ain't it. Come to church and, and you 
give the tithes and the offerings. Uh -huh. and, and when you die, that's it. Yeah. You know, the devil has you thinking that, that that's it. Yeah. You know, God has a plan for fair and play. Yeah. And this that's poor right. beggar with all of his misfortune, yeah. he knew that. He trusted well, that's God. That's right. He knew that. That's you right. know? And God has prepared a place for all of that's us. That's right. Yeah. The ones of us that know God. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Y'all just bear with me. You see on this parable right here, on this two men in life, God will show us that one is dressed in purple. The other one is covered in so One has plenty to eat. The other one is long to eat what fell from the rich man's table. And as you imagine, this rich man has servants at his beckoned command. Yeah. This poor right. beggar only has the dog to lick his soul. God has painted a picture of, he is showing us the difference between a rich man without God yeah. and a poor man with God. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So now we, we see these two men together in life. Now let's look at these two men together. Come on, come on. You know, we all are pointing. The Bible says that the poor man died first. Yeah. Probably because God was showing us of giving, just like when we go to the funeral, it's not for the one that's in the castle because no, it's, no. it's already it's all it's already sealed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's giving us a chance to know that. One day we all going to die. Yes. And there is no place where you're going to spend eternity. Uh -huh. Maybe, have y'all ever heard of anybody talk about the pilot's field? The pilot's field. The pilot's field was a portion of land that people in the pilot industry, they were purchased and they would scoop the clay out of that land and the coal that was left after they had got all of the, the clay out of the, the land for right. all the use. Uh -huh. The priests would buy the land to buy the, to bury the strangers and the poor people and people that had no money. Yeah. The holes that was left, that's what they buried. Yeah. Yeah. The potter field was just a poor yeah. place of burial for people who had no money. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and then I started thinking, I said, well, he, the Bible didn't say he was buried. I said, well, then God had been, took me to, uh, I had an addiction there. And he said that he was probably taken to the edge of town and thrown on what they call the dump heap of Gehenna. Gehenna was the dump at the end of town well, they would take the garbage and the refuse and the poor people that town, okay. and they would just literally throw them on the fire. Wow. Wow. It was also the case that when a poor person or a beggar or a transit died who had no money or had no one to take care of, they would take their body out and just literally throw them on the fire. Yeah. Okay. And that would be their yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. when I was studying this, God had begun to deal with me on cremation. Yeah. You know, a lot of times when people are cremated, you know, people have um, bad feelings about that. They think there's something bad about that. But the Bible says that this poor beggar was thrown on the fire. And in the ashes that we get from people that have been created, uh, cremated are like the ashes of this poor beggar. <laughs> We cannot put God in the box and think that God cannot take the ashes or the dust or the dirt that we are made from and bring it together and meet them in the ass. All right, come on. Come on. So that's the poor man. We're going to go through this. I know it's a little boring, but we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Now we're going to look at the, the rich man. He didn't do so well. Yeah. The rich man with all his wealth, he couldn't help but have a good, wonderful son. Yeah. But with all his wealth, he could not bribe 
and bring in reap up on the field. Ooh, come on, come yeah. on. With all his money, yeah. he could not the doctors and the lawyers that he rubbed elbows with. Yeah. Uh -huh. They couldn't do nothing for him. Right. So money, <laughs> money yeah. is going to take you to the grave. Mm -hmm. But what about after the grave? Yeah, okay. <laughs> but this rich man, he could not help but have a beautiful, fine throne. Mm -hmm. You know, at that time, you know, this man was so rich and evil that he probably had to pay more <laughs> Which was a common custom at that time. Okay, yeah, right. You know, he had to pay right. them, you know, because, I mean, have y'all ever been to a funeral and they done close the box and they give up and give remarks and, you know, you know this person gonna live the hell it's like. <laughs> you know, he yeah. you know, he ain't. You just yeah. you know where you're going. Yeah. And people get up there and yeah. they try to preach him or uh, talk him in hell. Yeah. You know, or, yeah. or, I mean, yeah. in hell. Yes. Yeah. You know, but while this rich man's funeral was being held on earth, the real man himself was in hell and wow. doing the torment of the day. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, my God. That's right. He didn't do so well. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, church. Yeah. Listen, when people come to you and, they, and you have a conversation with them about hell, and they start telling you about, well, I, well I'm going to hell because I'm, that's where my friends don't be at. Don't run. Because hell is not a place where you go and mingle and <laughs> with right. hell is not a place. Ain't gonna be no french fries, no chicken fries, no, ain't gonna be no chip fries. Ain't gonna be none of that. Hell is gonna be lonely day for somebody. It's gonna be a gift. You the only person in the world. Listen, today is the day of salvation. Don't let nobody trick you. Don't let the enemy get in your ear and tell you that you gonna, you got time to get it right. That's right. That's right. But you don't know. You don't know, man. I tell you, is it? Oh my God! You know, you think you got time? Let I wanna. We gonna do something right now, okay? Okay, I'm gonna count to three. I'm gonna show you how quick Jesus gonna come back. When I count to three, when I say you're going to count to three, when I say go, we're going to go, okay? We're going to start. I'm going to urge my to stay. One, two, too late. Too late. It's going to be that quick. I got that. First of all, let's look at the name. The Bible tells us that this poor beggar was carried 
into eternity by the angels. Wow. Right. He was carried into eternity and he was in the bosom of Abraham. This is a term that the Jewish people used to describe this place where people that die in the awe of God, that's where they go. Yeah. It's a term like in the book of Revelation that talks about the martyrs and the soul being underneath the altar. It's a place of protection and bliss and holiness. You know, and, and you know, listen, it says that the angel carried him to Abraham's side. And Minister Thompson can testify to this because her uncle Bill. Yeah, we, uh, we was like his caught captain. And we would take him out to eat, get his hair cut. And then he started getting worse. And we seen him in a period of transition. And we went to Easy Funeral Home one afternoon. And he was talking about being his more daddy and his other brothers being carried up this ladder. Into heaven. Wow. And at, at first you would think he was talking out of his head. But Mr. Thompson can testify that it was like, it wasn't eerie, but it was like peace. You could feel the presence of God in the bit, in the room. And I was like, whoa. So if people tell you that they were with one of their loved ones and the angels took them to heaven, believe it, because it's scripture. Because the book okay. of Psalms says the angels are the chariots of God. Okay. And one of, when God, one of God blesses one to go home, go home to be with the Lord, God sends the angel to pick him up. Now isn't that good that God loves us and cares for us like that? Yeah. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? Yes, yes. Pastor Lomax, Stephen Lomax. Man, I, I had been talking about him. I was telling the real. At first, I was mad. I was mad at God. But then, for a minute, then I was like, God took that away. The Holy Spirit took that away. Because Pastor ran a good race. He called a good fall. Amen. Man, I, can you imagine when you? Us, want us that has been under his teaching. Yeah. When we go home to be with the Lord, yeah. you know what, Pastor? I know you're going to want to run and hug him and yeah. tell him how much you miss him. Yeah. But you know what, Pastor? The way I knew, Pastor would be like, hold up. <laughs> you know the one I preached about? Oh, God. You know the one I sung about? Oh, you know the one that I about. He's alive and well. Look. Oh, yeah. He's alive and he's well today. Oh, God, you got to see Jesus tell me, how to see the teaching and the preaching and the living word in his back. Oh, They had changed place. Wow. 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 
this man in time has changed places with this beggar. Now this rich man is hell who denied this rich, this poor beggar a crumb from his table and now begging this poor beggar for a drop of water to go on his side of the cooking. This man with all his wealth and all his riches would now have all the luxuries of life now would be glad to get a drop of water. Come on. Yes, sir. I know there are some people in here. I'm ready to take my seat here a little bit. I know there are some people here who reject the uh, uh, doctrine of, of eternal torment for the wicked. You know, there are some people who will say, and I'm bold about it, I don't believe that. You Christians believe that. It's true, brother, you want to believe it or not. You know, in hell, going to be just as hot for the one that who do believe that as one I just say it, God said it. People don't even preach about it. They want to be sugar-coated and sweet man when they walk out of church feeling good about themselves. But there's a dying hell coming from those who don't know Jesus Christ. And if we don't preach it, some of them are going to go there that shouldn't go.
than to do it that way. Because when I wanted to go to Jesus, all I asked him to forgive me. God, I love you. I surrender. I give you my all. You know, if you didn't have to do all that in the crown of thorns, you know, they put it on his head. You know? and, and the thorns were like, y'all, anybody got rose bushes? Or uh, anybody pick blackberry? The hurt don't. Yeah. Yeah. Now they took the, the crown of thorns, which was like that. The thorns were long. Well, and they just been laid on his head. And they pushed it on his head. Yeah. It, it was, it, if you deal with this, if you deal with mental illness, don't be ashamed. It's for you. Yeah. You know, if you're dealing with migraine headache, right. that's for you. Yeah. And if you got a man part thinking you a woman, that's for you. If you got a woman part thinking you a man, that's for you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my He loves you. He loves you. And they said that. You know, they nailed him to the cross. And. The Romans and the Sadducees and the Pharisees, we got him now. Yeah. We got the nail going to hold him to the cross. But it wasn't the nail. Hallelujah. It was love. Jesus. Oh, oh, he was cold. He took God up any time. He could have hang off that crown, yeah. that cross any time. Yeah. But his love for you and Thank me. You. Oh, he loves us the way he died. You know, he paid the price. And they said that, you know, he, died, he actually died. Yeah. And they put him in a bar or two. You know why they put him in a bar or two? Because they, all, because they knew it was going to be just used for the weekend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And they, they put him in a tomb. And he was there three days. And they said that while he was there, he kicked the doors of hell wide open. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus. he began to minister and preach in hell. Yeah. Set the captives free. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, can you imagine him preaching? Then? He knew Satan was dead. And he knew that Satan was running Rothschild over his people. Uh -huh. And he heard the cries and the tears and felt the tears and the, uh, the sadness in people because they didn't. A lot of people didn't believe he was actually going to be resurrected. Yeah. Right. resurrected. Yeah. Oh, but he came out of the tomb. Yeah. Yeah. Because he knew he had it early. Yeah. Yeah. Early. Yeah. He kept hearing yeah. his people. Yeah. They needed him. So early one Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God came out of the grave. Yeah. 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 You know what he was doing?
people have forsaken me, they have forgotten me, they washed their hands. Testify, Tom. But laying in that bed, that prison bed, I feel something. I heard a still voice saying, I'm here. I thought I'd been here. I'm here. And then, laying in that bed, I began to die there.
Listen, God gives us warning. He gave me warning. He gave me warning. I did not take heed, so he let me run wild. He let me run. But he didn't go my way. And he's up in the country like you. Uh, a lot of stuff happened. You know, y'all know the story. I got my babies back there. Uh, Corey and Bones. Amen. They were born while I was in prison. So, I mean, y'all, I mean, we just be honest. My wife, she, we, we good. You know, and I know y'all was good. Oh, I ain't not to have it. You were in prison. They got two kids. And what the devil thought was meant for evil. It's better than what God did for good. I love all my kids. I love all my friends. I my son Travis, he's in federal prison up in Kentucky. Same thing I did, same thing. But he's going to be all right. Yes, I sir. said, he died three times. God, yes, he pronounced dead three times. Yes, God brought yes, him back sir. from the, the dead. Yes, and we still praying for him because he said, I believe. I said, more to it than that. You know, but he's going to be all right because he knows. You know, he know and, and my wife went to. He was in a coma. My wife went to a and, and the girlfriend, and who else was in there? Shine, shine. Maya was in the room with him. My wife was in the room. My wife was in the room. Oh, dear. Right there. And they, I, 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 they saw the power of prayer. And they talk about it now, even right to this day. They see how God moved. Besides, uh, my son Tracy would say, well, he had that money. He wasn't going to go nowhere like that. <laughs> <laughs> Who was me? I know my brother. He ain't going to leave that money behind. <laughs> no, he ain't. Uh, uh, you get out of the way. I'm getting that money. <laughs> but, but I just want y'all to know that. You know, I thank y'all for being thanks for me. I know this is my first time. I was a little bit nervous. Right now. It's all right. It right. took a while. But, you know, man, Pastor talked yesterday. Holy Ghost, yes. I need you. Yes. Yes. Oh, Holy Ghost. Yes. And it matters. He showed up. And I'm grateful. Yes. I love y'all. You love y'all know how I don't talk a lot. But, you know, when I, when I do talk, I want to be a thank you. Yes. I won't be talking loud and saying nothing. No, no, no. I said that because my wife self knows it. Yes. I don't know. Yes. So again, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll have a chance to say something else. I know. Uh, don't let Satan get in your ear. Don't feel ashamed. I'm right here. I'm a miracle. Y'all think people in the Bible, y'all think they were born in heaven? They are ordinary people God used to do extraordinary things. I'm a miracle. You're a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let the devil. When you come, people say, well, I, I don't want to come to the altar because people don't say, every time I turn around, she or he at the altar. Keep coming. Oh, right. One day you're going to leave it at the altar. Keep yeah. coming. Don't let the devil tell you and your blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come. Come. Don't feel the same. Satan wants you. Amen. Man, he wants you. You don't think you're no good. I know. I'm telling you. You know how you went to the restaurant, found a good restaurant, and it was good. If you want to tell somebody about it, oh, God found somebody. His name is Jesus. He's alive and well. Come on, give him a round of applause. Come on, let's bless God for this word. Come on, come on, come on. I'm praising God for you because I know what it took to let go of some stuff to stand here. The doors of the church are open. The preacher preached this is not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. 
the altar is open for anybody that wants that to be your testimony. That what I'm going through is not what it looks like and it's not what it has to be. Well, there'll be one today who seek a baptism or seeking to become a member of this church by baptism, letter, or Christian experience. The altar is yours right now. The preacher said it well. Don't let anybody get in your ear. Don't let the devil get in your ear. Because remember, you're responsible for your own salvation. All of us up here can preach to be blue in the face about heaven, hell, and about how we're supposed to get it together. But it is ultimately up to you to make that decision. But there'll be one today. And it's already getting better. Come down here, Thompson. All y'all preachers up here, y'all make me feel old. I call you by your last name now. I'm standing down here with you. I want every preacher in the room to come down here and put their hands on them. We're going to pray today. Especially you, wife. Especially you, wife. Listen, let me tell you something. You just stood and proclaimed the word of God. Lift your hands up. Keep them lifted. Keep them lifted. Why? This is the position that y'all have to be in at all times. Because there's going to come some days, husband or wife is going to have her hands raised. And you got to cover her too. Y'all, y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just going to put this out here. I talked about this marriage stuff because in January we're going to do a marriage seminar. Right? But it's not just for married people. It's for married people, people who are engaged and singles looking to be engaged and to be married. We're not going to exclude anybody. We're going to do, do this for everybody. Because people don't understand it is good to have a partner praying for you. Especially when you're on this ministerial journey. Because y'all don't see the attacks that he gets. And sometimes his wife that sees what's coming before you even see it. And vice versa. You answer God's call. This is what I'm about to say to you. You answer God's call. And because you answer the call, God's getting ready to shift some stuff in y'all's life, in y'all's marriage, in y'all's family. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here, but God is getting ready to do it. I, I, I see some people that believe and just say, do it, God. Do it, God. Is, is there anybody in the house that, that feels that God is going to shift some things in their situation? I dare somebody to say, do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Before we go to prayer, are, are there any prayer requests in the house? Any prayer requests in the house? Pray for Kevin. He's been in the nursery home for five years. He's still there. I believe God got him there for a week. We need to get together and go see our brother. Of course, of course. I have a sister in the house that's been swept clean. And I ask for a special prayer. Amen. 